This video is sponsored by World Anvil. So, um, boy, there are a lot more of you now. <laughs> My video about the forgotten D&D &D rule about real-time play kind of exploded. It is easily my most viewed video in months and has more comments than almost any of my videos except for the second and fourth videos that I ever posted, the ones that blew up way back in April. So if you're new to the channel, welcome! I am getting really close to 25,000 subscribers, so when I do, I'm gonna do a live stream and I'm going to do a giveaway. I haven't decided what I'm gonna give away yet, this is happening pretty quickly, but I'm thinking maybe a D&D Beyond code for Dragonlance, uh, maybe some dice, maybe a physical copy of one of the starter sets. I want to pick something that a lot of viewers probably don't have, so uh, let me know in the comments what sounds good. A few months ago, I made a video about how you can admit your mistakes to your D&D group, which is ultimately a good thing. It helps you prioritize the fun of your players and helps cut through the mentality that DMs feel the need to be infallible. That concept in and of itself was so loaded that I made a sequel video about why exactly Dungeon Masters feel the need to seem like they have all the answers. In that video, I talked about how the culture of D&D puts pressure on DMs to try to come across as infallible, and how it's useful to understand why that feeling exists, even if you don't try to replicate it in your games. Even if you don't make any effort to seem like you have all the answers, the game is doing so on your behalf, so you should at least know that. But what if you do want to make it seem like you have all the answers? What if you do want to hide your mistakes? Well, let's discuss how we can do that at our tables. Before we get too far into this, I want to start by acknowledging why I started with the video about admitting your mistakes. Why is that the skill that I felt we needed to discuss first? Because there are some mistakes that it's more important to own up to when they happen rather than mask them. Specifically, if it will negatively impact the fun of the game to not just own your mistake and move on, then you should just own your mistake and move on. That includes things like when a boss fight is too easy, or a magic item is overpowered, or a mystery is too obtuse, and as a result, the game isn't fun. Or, you know, hypothetically, when you were cleaning out your garage and a leftover piece of flooring slipped out of your hand and booped you on the face and left a very obvious mark on your nose. Hypothetically. And if you're in a situation where you aren't sure whether or not to admit a mistake, it might be wise just to own the mistake. Over time, you'll get better about being able to feel out a situation and see whether or not you should own up to the mistake or let it play. But the secret code is this. There are some things where knowing the truth makes the game more fun and others where being denied the truth makes the game more fun. But the latter is always at the service of the former. If you think three of your players would have a more fun time if they don't get to peek behind the curtain, but one player would have less fun if you don't let them in on your mistake, that is always more important. Because hiding the truth is optional in D&D. It's something fun you can do, and everything on this list is fun to do. It can be a really fun part of your style. But they're not as important as being clear. There's an expression in writing circles that it's much better to be intrigued rather than confused. That same approach goes for moments like this. When you make a mistake and hide it and nobody notices, then it sure makes it seem like you've got all the answers. However, if even one person noticed the mistake, and it's the kind of mistake that you have to deal with and you don't, then that person is having a much worse time. And it's more important to drop the facade and get everybody on the same page, rather than have one person sulking because they are feeling the brunt of your mistake and the others aren't. That's just something important to know going forward. If you disagree, I suspect we will just not see eye to eye on this, so in order to have a good time with this video, just pretend I'm right, say it out loud, see how it feels, maybe you'll get used to the idea. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's talk about how you can hide your mistakes. Lesson one, master your poker face. Poker faces. Don't flinch in front of the core members. Something doesn't go our way. Don't hang your head. Don't shift in your seat. If some of you are wondering why I used a clip from a movie instead of, you know, the very famous Lady Gaga song, then you've never tried to upload a YouTube video that uses somebody else's music in it. Honestly, between the title and that clip, I don't know what more there is to say about this lesson. Get good at hiding your expressions. I doubt I am as good at this as I try to be. I have had at least one player call me out for my big reactions before, but I still try to keep my expressions as neutral as possible whenever I can. This is something I know for a fact that I started doing as a result of watching actual play DMs. Not just Matt Mercer on Critical Role, but also Chris Perkins on Acquisitions Incorporated. And neither of them are totally serious the whole time. They let their guard down and joke with their players all the time. But they also remember that they are essentially the straight man in the comedy duo with their players. Honestly, that could probably be a whole other video. Uh, probably should be, 
But part of their approach is to not give anything away, not to give away too much of what they're thinking. Not always, but as much as is reasonable. The more you do that, the more you convey the idea that everything is proceeding as you have foreseen. Don't scribble furiously. Whatever happens, you have to look like it's exactly what you knew was gonna happen. Huh, I was kind of setting you up for a Return of the Jedi clip there. So, all the clips for this video are gonna be from the same movie? But we're not going through that movie for D&D advice, right? This is just examples for this one topic? Okay, whatever. It's a good movie. I'll roll with it. Lesson two. Project confidence. We're ready. Better believe it. We're gonna get creamed. It's okay if you don't know what you're doing. So few of us actually do know what we're doing. Not just in life, but in our D&D games. But if you want to make it seem like you have everything figured out, confidence is key. There's no reason to discuss the things that you're most worried about or most insecure about because there's a good chance nobody else noticed. You might feel like every mistake is obvious, but remember, you have all the information about this campaign, not them. They don't always know when you're staying true to the adventure or whether you're getting things completely mixed up. They don't know that you've been forgetting the major abilities of your monsters until the final rounds of combat. And guess what? They never need to know. Let me give you an example. You're running a fight against a Yugoloth, a big scary demon thing, and this monster is getting creamed. It is not nearly as challenging or fun as you planned. Now, in the middle of this battle, you remember my last video on this subject where I told you that you can just admit to your players, hey, this fight isn't as hard as it should be, can I up the difficulty a little bit? But right as you're about to do so, you realize you've been forgetting the creature's magic resistance ability. They're supposed to have advantage on all of their saving throws against spells or magic. That would have made a huge difference. So what do you do? Do you tell them you messed up and start applying the feature now? Or do you describe the creature getting a burst of energy and now this ability takes effect? The answer is entirely up to your style. There's nothing wrong with admitting that you messed up. You're only human. But also, as long as it won't make anybody have a bad time, you can hide the mistake just by describing this as a power that this monster has unlocked. Fourth edition did that all the time. When monsters lost half their hit points, they would unlock new powers. That trope exists in movies and TV shows and comic books and video games and other versions of D&D, and for good reason. It's dramatic. Using that idea to mask your mistake actually makes the fight more exciting. Projecting confidence goes a long way toward masking the fact that you don't know what you're doing. You might feel like you're running a bad game, but don't declare it and tell your players that. Don't make the evaluation on their behalf. Let them decide whether they're having fun, and then you can key off of their reactions. Also, in the Yugoloth example, what you shouldn't do is go back and redo turns or reroll saving throws and undo what had already happened. In fact, that's another great way to hide your mistakes. Lesson three, don't retcon anything. She made a mistake. Let's not relive it. If you aren't familiar, retcon is a term meaning retroactive continuity. It means going back and changing something that already happened. For example, nah, Sherlock Holmes didn't die when he fell off the cliff. He's fine, actually. Or, nah, Ray isn't nobody. She's actually a secret Palpatine. Ugh. In this case, I mean going back and redoing turns or changing what happened on a previous turn because you're trying to undo one of your mistakes. First, I don't think anybody should really ever undo anything that happened more than a couple of turns ago. If it's been more than one round of combat since it happened, changing it will probably impact too much. There are probably exceptions, and there are ways to fudge that, but that's a larger topic. The short version is, don't take away the things that the players did, and definitely don't make them replay any turns of combat again. Second, if you don't wind back the clock to fix your mistakes, then you further cement the idea that you know what you're doing. It helps drive home the idea that everything is going according to plan. This is not the reason why you shouldn't undo the player's turns, but it's a nice bonus. Lesson four, don't lash out. You're a lousy fucking softball player, Jack! Getting frustrated when your game isn't going well is perfectly natural, but don't take it out on your players, ever. There are tools that you can use to course correct when things aren't going according to plan. We've talked about some of those on the channel and we'll talk about more in the future. I have no doubt of that but never, ever take it out on your players. They are your guests, they are your friends, and lashing out never solves a situation or makes anybody feel better. I don't have any more to say on this subject. Just don't do this.
So when can you vent? How can you get these things off your chest? Lesson five, blow off some steam with your friends outside of the game session. Anyway, since we seem to be out of witnesses, I thought I'd drink a little. By no means am I encouraging you to never tell anyone you made a mistake. You can even tell your players if you're so inclined. But if you don't want to bring it up during the game, you should wait and tell people in a different setting. Share it with your friends who aren't in your campaign, or the players who also have experience as a DM, or even folks online. My Discord server is full of people sharing stories about their D&D games and giving each other advice. And sometimes, you just need to vent about a mistake you made, and then let other people tell you that it isn't actually as bad as you think. Because that's true. A mistake at the table is often not as bad as we think it is. Because more often than not, we are our own worst critics. And that brings us to the final lesson. Lesson six. Every game is a new start. Don't worry about the doctor. This trial starts Monday. When you make mistakes you can't get out of and you can't hide, it can be tempting to let them linger. It can suck to feel like you're somebody who messed up and ran a bad game of D&D. But remember, you always get a do-over. Unless things are so bad that somebody leaves the campaign, which, listen, if things get that bad, don't hide your mistakes. But beyond that extreme example, you'll always have another shot to learn from what you did wrong and improve for next time. As I've said before, a lot of these examples cultivate a specific style, which might not be right for your game. But this is universal. This is always true. When you mess up, learn from it, and move on to the next game. If you do want your DM style to make it seem like you've got all the answers, practice all these techniques in your game. Master your poker face, project confidence, don't walk back decisions, don't lash out, and share your mistakes with your friends outside of the game session itself. And when you've mastered all of these techniques, you'll have your players second-guessing you. They won't know whether what happened at the table was all part of your plan or just a happy accident. They might have suspicions, but if you never tip your hand, then they'll react to these moments by saying things like this. It doesn't matter what I believe. It only matters what I can prove. That was a long walk, but I think it was worth it. One of the things that lawyers in the JAG Corps have to do when arguing a murder trial is control the flow of information. There are certain details that you want everyone in the room to know, but other things that nobody should know except for you. But you don't have to go to law school or join the Navy to employ this skill. All you need to do is sign up for World Anvil. World Anvil allows you to gather all of the info for your game, maps, encounters, lore, character details, NPC notes, timelines, randomizer tools, dice rolling functions, and collect them into one easy to use interface to streamline your experience at the gaming table. You can share articles and content in a way that you control with special notes that only you can see. All of the players can see the article you wrote about the Wicked King, but you can hide the notes about his secret daughter that his advisors hid on the other side of the world. Or that the fact that the King's voice is based on Leslie Nielsen from Airplane. Nobody has to know that but you. Visit worldanvil.com and use the promo code SUPERGEEK to save 40% off of any annual membership. Thank you so much to World Anvil for sponsoring this video. Thank you so much for watching. This video took a little longer than usual to make. Not because it's a super long video, just because... Anytime I watch the scene from A Few Good Men, I wound up watching the entire rest of the movie. It's so good. Okay, that was originally in the script as kind of a joke, although that did keep happening during the scripting phase. But then this video actually did take me a lot of time to make because I had to film it three times. I had some sound issues the first time, so like my previous video, I had to film it again because it was unlistenable. Then I recorded it, I edited it, I shut down my computer because that usually means I can export the video without any glitches, and then my external hard drive just didn't boot up. And while I still had all the video on my phone, I'd lost all that nice, high-quality audio for my next five videos. Anyway, you didn't need to know any of that. Those were mistakes I totally could have hidden, but I just wanted you to know how hard it was. Oh, come on. I'm clearly setting you up for a Batman Begins clip here. Nothing? Come on, what do you got for me? I have no responsibilities here whatsoever. Oh, fuck you. If you want to support the channel, there are a few ways you can do that. You can subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about new videos as soon as they come out, which is every Monday and Thursday. Watching these videos on release day really helps the channel grow. You can support me on Patreon. Every new patron at any dollar amount makes a big difference toward improving the channel. You can join my Discord to be a member of the community. It's a really wonderful group of people who love RPGs and actual play. It's awesome. And you can sign up for my newsletter to get notified about updates when I've got things going on. Until next time, play fair and have fun. The only thing I have to eat is Yoo-Hoo and Cocoa Puffs, so if you want anything else, bring it with you.